section three, we're looking at a slope of a line found on page 112. When I think of slopes, I think of skiing and probably you think of snowboarding. So what we want to do is start out by taking a look at maybe a few pictures and see if we can find the difference between some of these little things below. So as we look at what's the difference between each of the ski slopes, uh, and each one here is a little hint as we compare, us them, compare and contrast them, have a 100 vertical feet drop. So we got a slope I jokingly call Widowmaker, another one called Fun in the Sun, and Bunny Delight. And as we look at the difference of them, since they all have a 100 vertical feet drop, the difference is that that 100 vertical feet drop is, has a different amount of horizontal space that it drops 100 feet in. And uh, less, a little bit more, and much more in Bunny Delight as we go across. So we can think of slope as a ratio, the amount of vertical change over the amount of horizontal change. In math, we might think of it as something like the rise over the run. And maybe we can come up with a formula here. We call m the slope, and that's delta y over delta x. Delta y is the difference in the y values, so that's y2 minus y1. And then delta x is x2 minus x1. Doesn't matter what point is x1, y1, and which is x2, y2, as long as we subtract them consistently, that would be good. So on one other thing there, x1 and x2 can't be the same number, otherwise that gives us zero in the denominator. And we've got some troubles with that. All right, let's look at example one and try to find the slope of the line that contains those two points below. So let's start with the formula. Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's just call the first point on the left here point 1, that one point 2. I like to label them just so we can be consistent. And so the y value from point 2 is negative 7. Now we're going to subtract the y value from point 1, which is 5. Over the x value from point 2, which is 3, we're going to subtract the x value from point 1, which is negative 1. So let's simplify. Remember that subtracting negative is the same as adding a positive. So negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. 3 plus positive 1 is 4. And when we reduce that, that's a negative 3. Now some of you are thinking, well, wait, where's that vertical over horizontal? Yes, you can think of that as negative 3 over 1. And sometimes we just say negative 3. All right, here's the theorem. If you have this equation, some coefficient a times x plus some coefficient b times y equals some constant c, which in a previous theorem we said that gives us the equation of a straight line, a quick way to find the slope is to take the opposite of the coefficient of x over the coefficient of y exactly as it appears, once again, the denominator can't be zero. Now, that only works when x and y are on the same side of the equal sign. Opposite of the coefficient of x over the coefficient of y. So that's our little quick theorem to be able to look at an equation and find its slope. So let's practice one then. If we look here, a is 3, b is negative 4, since x and y are on the same side of the equal sign. And the opposite of 3 would be negative 3, and b exactly as it is, not changing it, is negative 4. And a negative divided by a negative simplifies to positive. So this equation has a slope of 3 fourths. All right, let's look at a couple special cases. <clears throat> let's look at a horizontal line. The coefficient a is 0, so ax doesn't exist. We just have by equals c. That slope is 0. Vertical line, we have ax, but b is 0, so b the y is missing. We have ax equals c, and we say the terms that there's no slope, but I kind of like the term undefined better. Uh, most of your books, most of your teachers will say no slope, but again, I like the term undefined. Sometimes you confuse 0 with no slope. So a slope of 0 has a slope. Its slope is 0. And then a vertical line is undefined. All right, so let's take a quick little look um, about skiing again. If we think of skiing, a horizontal line, the amount of distance you travel due to gravity is zero, so the slope is zero. 
But the vertical line's a little bit different. So I have a silly little saying to try to help you remember this. That uh, if you try to ski a vertical line, your body parts would be hard to find. Therefore, the slope is undefined. Yes, it rhymes. All right, so what I prefer is that for horizontal lines, we say the slope is zero. For vertical lines, I prefer we say the slope is undefined. Reason I prefer that is because that would give us the horizontal change in the denominator is zero. The definition of a fraction says you can't have zero in the denominator. All right, let's move on and take a look. We're going to try something new. We're going to graph. Going backwards, we have a point. We have the slope. Let's try to find the graph. Well, I hope that's not too small for you to see. But let's plot the point negative 3, 5. So from the origin, we're going to go left 3 for the negative 3 of the x component, then up 5 for the positive 5 of the y component. The slope is negative 1 half. You can think of that as go down 1, right 2. So we'll go down 1, right 2. From there, we'll go down another 1 and right 2 more. From there, we can go down another 1 and right 2 more. We get a couple of them. We can connect the dots and draw the equation, or draw the graph of our equation. So there's the graph of a line that goes through the point negative 3, 5 and has a slope of negative 1 half. Let's remember that when we see an equation in this form, y equals some coefficient, which we're going to call m for now, times x plus b, we call that the slope-intercept form of an equation. Remember from our definition of slope a minute ago, we let m represent the slope. So whatever that coefficient of x is, is the slope. This number b tells us where our graph crosses the y-axis, which is also known as the y-intercept. So let's graph this in example four. Let's try to get y by itself so we can get this in slope-intercept form. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So 4y is negative 3x plus 12. Divide everything in sight by 4 so we can get y by itself. y is negative 3 fourths x plus 3. So b, the slope, is negative 3 fourths. Sorry, that's m. The slope is negative 3 fourths. And B, the y-intercept, is 3. That's where it crosses the y-axis. All right, we've got our graph. And for this one, we're going to cross the y-axis at 3. So let's put a dot there, vertically going up 3. And then from there, we have a slope of negative 3 fourths. So I'm going to go down 3 points, right 4, put another dot, connect the dots, and we're done with our graph. So that's our first look at slope. What is slope? We've got the definition, given two points how to find the slope, the special case of the slope of a horizontal and vertical line, and how to graph the line given a point and a slope, or given an equation using slope-intercept form. So that's our look at slope for today.